Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today we're talking about Ria Ninjam. Ria Ninjam is awesome. It's a way for you to jam with people online. And I remember about a year ago, I kind of checked it out. I saw that nobody's there, but recently I'm seeing that actually lots of people are using it and you can find people to jam with in all weird hours of the day. And the issue of latency has been dealt with in a pretty creative way. So all in all, I think it's a very usable system. So let's set it up. So I got a few tracks set up here. This is my clean guitar sound. I got my dirtier guitar sound. So on these next two tracks, I have bass and percussion and both of them have this MIDI note filter on them so I can split the octave and play bass with my left hand and percussion with my right hand. If you wanna see how I set that up, check the link above. And together they sound like this. Now, a lot of people put Ria Ninja on their master track. I like to actually give it its own track and you'll see why in a second. So I'll just create a new track up top. Let's call this Ninja. And then I'll just right click here, developers, Kakos, and Ria Ninja. This comes with your regular install of Reaper and this window is what we see. Right now, Ria Ninja is not really connected to anything, but I can grab, for example, all these six tracks and I can make them children of this track. And now any sound on any of these tracks will get routed to Ria Ninja and then I can send that out to people. So I'll first show you the quick and dirty setup, which is how I and most people on Ninjam do it, even though technically it's not the correct way. And then I'll show you what the correct way is supposed to be and talk about why I don't always do that. So this is why I put Ninjam on a track rather than the master track, because sometimes you may like in the middle of a jam experience some issues and you want to fix those issues. But if it's on your master track, people will hear you fiddle with this. So I'll make a new track even and I'll call this like something like out. If for some reason my bass synth sound wasn't right, or if I was having some latency on the guitar, if I had to tune my guitar or anything like that, I can always quickly take that out and put it under here. And now this audio will not go to Ninja. Only audio routed to this plugin will go to Ninja. So for example, if I grab my clean guitar and start playing, we can see that we are sending signal out from Ria Ninja right here. So now let's go look for some people to play with. Super simple to do. I just click on connect right here and we'll see a bunch of rooms available. This is the name of the server, which is usually something generic. Tempo and the BPI, which I'll explain in a second. And this is the number of users that are on each room. So for example, this room up top right here, let's go in there and I'll show you what this info stuff is. So down here, if there's a password, you can click here and enter the password. Otherwise you don't need to connect with password to any of these generic rooms that are available. So I can hit connect. You have to agree to a license agreement, which basically, you know, it can be anything the server user puts here. But usually what the boilerplate agreement is saying is that people can copy and record this stuff and use them in their work. So don't play anything on Real Ninja that you don't want to be public because other people on the same server have every right to record the output of Real Ninja. So I just agree to this and I hit accept. And I'm already in here and I'm hearing a click. I'm hearing a click in 90 BPM. And it says down here, it says 16 BPI. I can adjust a metronome like this. So let's just turn it off for a second. So basically what this means is that whatever audio I play into Ria Ninja is gonna be held into like a buffer. And this buffer is 16 beats long or in 4.4, four, that means that it's four measures long. Whatever I play right now, in this window when it's going from one to 16, it will be played to everybody else in the room after we come back. So let's see that in action. I'll bring the metronome up a little bit. So everything I played on the last iteration just got heard by people if they were in the room. Basically, whatever I end up playing will go to the server four measures afterwards. And similarly, whatever everybody else plays will be held into the same buffer for four measures. And then at the beginning of one, that audio is released onto everybody on the server. This is a little bit difficult to wrap your head around. I know it was for me, but really, you don't really even need to think about this happening. All you got to do is just respond to whatever you hear. And that's that. So I've not really noticed this like affecting the way I play. It's just a regular jam, except that you don't see people. And it's kind of sad that you don't see people, but otherwise all good. So let's go through some of the parameters. So right here, I can, for example, write what instruments I'm playing. And that's good for people to see, you know, for example, when I usually go to a room, I check to see what instruments are missing and then I'll try to play that. So I have this at drum and bass, but I can make this, for example, guitar, and then people will see that I'm using a guitar. You can send up to eight tracks to Ria Ninja. What I prefer to do is just mix this kind of internally, get my sounds at a right level and just send them all as one stereo track in Ria Ninja. So if you want to play a loop on 
under the sync tab, we got a bunch of options. Set project tempo will set the tempo of my project, which is currently 110 to 90 BPM. And then what I can do is say start Reaper playback on next loop. So once we hit 16 on one, it'll start the loop. So now this loop is going out. And again, since I'm seeing that the loop is a little too loud, I can just make it quiet on my end. So let's this time join a group that already has a few people on here. So we have one group here, which is jamming out 100 BPM and there's six people in it already. So let's just connect to this one more time. I'll accept the terms. So when you first enter the server, there's not going to be any sound until the current interval finishes. And then whatever was stored on that buffer will be sent to you on the next one. Cool. We got lots of guitars. We got a bass. We got some drums. And here I can mix this song for myself. So if I'm finding, for example, there's too many guitars, let's pan them. So since there's too many people playing guitar, I'm just gonna play pad. I can always also mute myself if I want to kind of find the key before I come in. And you can see that people are coming and going. So, you know, right now we got one room that's popping, but there's always people that you can jam with, which I think is really cool. Now let's go over the proper way to set Ninjam up. So as we said before, you get up to eight tracks. So I can go to the Ninjam track, click the routing, and I can set it to have eight track channels. And I'll close it and go back to Ninjam. And as you can see, my stereo one, two, which is automatically ingesting all the children tracks is here. And the XMIT box is ticked, meaning this will be transmitted to others on my server. So XMIT just means transmit. What I can optionally do is to click add local channel here, maybe call this pads and guitar and set it to stereo three and four. So now I can come and take my guitars and pads out from the parent send by option and clicking the routing icon. And instead I'll route them to input three and four on the ninja track. So now I have my loop, my percussion track and bass going to one and two and the rest go to three, four. So this gives other users the option to separately set levels and pans for this stuff and they get to mix these themselves, but they get those two tracks separately. And also when I'm doing a sound check or tuning or changing presets or whatever, I can always untick this XMIT box on any of these channels and that way I won't disturb others while I do my setup. When I'm done, I'll just hit XMIT again and I'm back in business. So let's add one more local channel. This one I'll call talk back and let's set this one to mono five and this time I will click on this drop down menu and set this to voice chat instead. So when you do that, you get a little warning that you're about to circumvent the BPI for this track and you will just experience a generic amount of latency instead of the preset BPI for the server. So after we hit okay on this new track, I can transmit audio to other users with the minimum possible latency. So this is good if you need to just talk to people, but obviously this stuff will not be on a quantized latency amount. So I can set up another track, set it to my mic input and send this to track five on my ninja track. So now all the instruments I'll be transmitting through the BPI buffer, but my talkback mic is sent as soon as I speak. And of course you can always just chat via text down in this box here. And that's what most people do in my experience. Also remember that not all servers allow you to have multiple tracks or a talkback channel set up. So make sure you ask first or make your own server and then Bob's your uncle. You can do whatever you want. So the way we were doing it earlier, as you can see now is kind of unnecessary. I don't really need to move my tracks around. I can always just stop transmitting and do all all the sound check stuff I want to do and then just send it back. I don't need to move tracks from parent to parent and I can always mute tracks normally or through the Ninjam interface and so on. However, there are two decent arguments for the quick and dirty way. I mean, first of all, simplicity. If at any point I want to add a new instrument or synth, it's as quick as dragging it under this track and I'm off to the races versus having to, you know, possibly make new tracks, rerouting them to the proper channel. And all of that can take more time if you're doing this mid jam. And the second argument is, well, once I have a basic mix going, I have all the level and pants set up how I like it. I can always just close this window, get all this screen real estate back. And instead I can have my plugin UI showing to fiddle with those or my synth interface if I'm, you know, looking at envelopes and stuff like that. So I would rather not have to always have Ninjam open. I can just visually see everything I need to see right here. And I can use my regular hotkeys to create and delete and duplicate tracks quickly and on the fly. So the quick and dirty way is fine. But if you also want to do it kind of how it was intended, knock yourself out. This is Reaper. There's a lot of ways to do the same thing. Finally, Ninjam 
has its own top bar up here. So when it's in focus, I can go up here and I can go to file and open the preferences. And here I can set a directory to save session files as, and that'll give me multi-track recordings of everything in the server, both my own stuff and other users. By default, they will be in OGG Vorbis format and that is heavily compressed. So they will be really small files. But if you have the space, you can always tick this box to get WAV files. There are also some hotkeys here, like to mute master or metronome, add a new channel. And below there are some extra selection and routing options. And you can see all the hotkeys to those right next to them. Everything else up here is also accessible via the UI itself. So the only thing I really want to do up here personally is to set the directory of where the recordings go. If we go to this directory right here, we'll see that I already have some recordings from recent jams that I've done today. So I think this one is one I did as a test with Mike from Let's Talk About Reaper. And I can just grab them and import them into the project. Now, this is not the best naming convention ever, mind you. But as you can see, I have chunks of multi-track audio and each one is the length of one BPI. So some assembly is required and the naming convention is, as we saw, a little bit wonky. But otherwise, if you want to make stuff or play with anything, well, here you go. I don't know if there's a way to make this not record in chunks, but just a continuous recording. So if somebody knows that, drop it in the comments and I'll pin your comment and and yeah, I think we'll stop it right there. I'll show you how to create your own server in another video. Otherwise, there's an awesome video by Tormi Van Cool that shows you how to do it. So I'll put the link to that up here. I really also want to jam with all of y'all. I want to try a stream this Friday, October 15th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern time or something like that. I'll give you the exact time if it's possible. And if it's not too many hiccups, I'll create a server, stream my audio. Y'all can come in and join the jam. And if that's fun and if people like it, maybe we'll make that a weekly thing. But only if people like it. If not... So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you're down to jam with me, put it down in the comments and the more responses I get, the more likely I am to be motivated enough to figure out how all that stuff plays together. You can now become a member of this channel and click the link above to find out more or hit the join icon on any of the videos. As always, you can also donate to the channel through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks to Magnus for being our most recent donor. Thank you so much, Magnus. The coffee was delicious. I got it right here. And to everybody else, take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye.